Delver deck. Oh, wait, no, Speaking I want this one. Speaking of Delver deck. I want that one. You can have that one. Bruce Strong this round is playing blue-white Delver uh, at 4-0 right now, both of these players. Uh, John Howell, however, is playing a deck with three Crater Hoof Behemoth. A card that you actually wrote about this week. This is very similar to this week's Building Out a Budget deck. He, uh, he fixed the mana base, which is good. Uh, I suggest that people do that if they're willing to invest a little more money. Uh, I also 12 Scars Duels, so yeah, clearly is, willing to yeah, pull out um, his wallet. I also uh, encouraged people to uh, add Elish Norn and maybe a Gristlebrand to the deck. So so he has this three is, Elish Norns and a Gristlebrand. This is my Building Out a Budget deck from this week, sitting at 4 out. Last week we had a deck at 6-0 and that was my Building Out a Budget deck from the week before. That's awesome. And now this week... JVL oh, yeah. just very casually innovating for the rest of us. Well, I mean, it, the, the, my deck's like eight cards different because I'm not allowed to spend money, so... Oh, yeah. I will, uh... But you, you had Crater Hoof Behemoth, credit. and yeah. now, you're, now he's playing Crater Hoof Behemoth. And it's not bad. <laughs> did and you have three 1-1s in play? Yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. just dead, right? They're just dead, yeah. I did have Tracker's Instincts, yeah. Tracker's Instincts, Mulch, Lingering Souls, Unburial Rites, Faithless Looting, all four ofs. I had all those. Four birds, four elf. Uh, yeah, yeah. Four birds, four pilgrims, one elf. All right, we're off. Um, John Howell leading things off with an Avacyn's Pilgrim. Yeah. Let's see what Bruce Strong has for turn one. He has a Sea Chrome Coast and going to make anything. Think for a bit. Yep, decides to just pass the turn. Bruce is a very Phyrexian heavy Delver deck. He has eight Phyrexian, uh, sorry, six Phyrexian spells uh, as well as three Thought Scours. Yeah. Now, uh, John Hell uh, with a Lingering Souls here. We're gonna make some guys. Yeah. And uh, Bruce without many options. Uh, Bruce Bruce's hand is a little strange. He kept like a, I think a four or five lander as Delver, which you never really want to do. Yeah, but he has Mana Leak. We can see that. I'm not sure. A Mana Leak Snapcaster uh, Vapor Snag, I think, is the hand. Okay. Sure. Okay. So if you see Pilgrim on turn one, do you just like snap snag that or no? I don't think so. Like, I, I don't think you can afford to, but it's also really rough to get just, like, ramped out of the game. Yeah, but, I mean, you also, like, don't know what you're necessarily playing against. It's weird. All right, he's going to snag, snag one of the tokens. Token. That's fine. Um, you like snagging a token over snagging Pilgrim? I guess you're against Freets, so... Yeah. No, I think I snagged the Pilgrim. Yeah, I think you have to snag Pilgrim there. But actually, the version of Freets that he's playing against, I think I would... Probably rather have my uh, pilgrim snagged. So yeah, it because uh, with crater hoofs trigger on the stack, if it gets snagged, then you get blown out a little bit. Yeah. So crater of a human in hand for John. Probably find a way to discard just this if he trying if to he, find a faithless looting. Yeah, if he finds a faithless looting, he can just win the game it, that turn. I think mulch and. And uh, Bruce, uh, not no mana leak mana open right now. Finds a forest and uh, I believe that is a, a shimmering, shimmering grotto. grotto. Yeah. With that uh, copperline gorge. He has four shimmering grottos in this deck. Yeah, no, I, I I think they're good in this deck. I would also play four shimmering grottos if I were playing this deck. He has a Gavany Township as well. I would actually probably play two of those. His mana base, for those of you taking notes at home, four Copperline Gorge, four Black Leaf Cliffs, four Razor Verge Thicket. So just all of the non-blue Scars Duels. Four Shimmering Grotto, five Forest, one Mountain, one Plains, one Gavany Township. And now uh, attacking Bruce down at 19 here. Does find that uh, Faithless Looting, but it's in his yard, so it will be two turns before he kills opponent with the Crater Hoof Behemoth via <laughs> Faithless Looting. But I think he's just going to put an Alice Garden to play. Yeah. That'll that'll win just fine. Yeah, very likely. Crater Hoof Behemoth does do it all at once, though. It's an appealing part of it. That's so Delver, Delver fa fails to flip. Uh, Bruce with these Mana Leaks in hand, but unfortunately for him, he, he cannot continue uh, what is it he, he, he cannot continue casting threats to the board because if he does he's not going to be able to leave mana leak mana open so like this turn he, he could be able to 
cast a uh, Geist, but he's not going to have that option. Yeah. I mean, th that's sort of the bind that Freitz puts you in as soon as turn three is you have to figure out when you can commit mana on your main phase and when you have to hold up counters. Yeah, and, uh, you know, as Delver, if you, if you don't really have, like, that turn one Delver followed by a turn two Snapcaster against a deck like Freitz, then you're never going to get to tap out. You're never going to cast your Geist of St. Trapped. Yeah, and you can just get beat up by, you know, a Spirit and a Pilgrim to a turn. And then eventually you have to start doing things and they yeah, slam an Elf uh, This turn, a few different options for both of our players here. Yeah, so Bruce just gonna try on Burial Rites, the Elish Dorn. Gonna get Mana Leaks here. That's fine, though. Yeah, you can just I mean, flash it back the next turn. Yeah. And uh, attacking for one. I'm not Good sure time. I like jamming on Burial Rites into open counter magic. Like, like, he's not doing anything, anything, you don't like, have to do anything, you play a bunch of his mana. His whole deck costs no mana, you know for certain that he has to have a counter spell if he leaves the mana open. Correct. Deck. So, like, he, on that turn, like, he could have just tried to flash back Lingering Souls and flash back Faithless Looting. Yeah. And if he counters out of those spells, you're much happier. Yeah. I mean, if, if your opponent is mana leaking a flashback spell, you're golden. You are so fine. Yeah. Like, Unburial Rites should be, like... You're going to need. I understand both it's a flashback ends. spell, but both ends are so important. Yeah. Okay, so. Dear Bruce, please lay it out for us. Uh, Crater Hoof Behemoth and Black Cleave Cliffs, the two cards that we can see so far. Alright, Bruce, uh, probably like, oh man, he's playing the building <laughs> on a budget deck. That deck's the best. Whoever wrote about that was a genius. He's so smart, I can never win. <laughs> How am I going to beat Crater of Behemoth? I can't. I should just scoop right now. And that's what Crater of Behemoth does, guys. It makes <laughs> them scoop right now. Right meow. Right meow? Right meow. Crater of Behemoth, 2 OP, man. So, Sword of War and Peace in Bruce Strong's hand. Yeah, Bruce uh, putting John down to 15 here. We got a lot of uh, flashback. Bruce has uh, a few different options here. He can leave open Snapcaster Mana Leak. That's what he chooses to do. That's definitely right. Yeah. I mean, Binding John time. can just play Black Cleaves, Cliffs tapped or play Shimmering Grotto. So, like, if he plays Black Cleaves, Cliffs into land, unburial rights through Mana Leak, then there isn't a whole lot that Bruce can do. He has to wait till next turn, though. But he played Shimmering Grotto this turn. But I think he still has another top line. It's fine. Okay. Uh, Lingering Souls. Big flashback. I guess he also probably wants to loot away his glyphs. But like, he doesn't need to play either land until he resolves the flashback Faithless looting. looting, maybe? Or a... Ooh, oh, Tracker's Instinct. Tracker's Instinct. Instinct. It's a pretty good one. Yeah, I really don't like playing Grotto before that. Because you just have so many decisions that can interact with cards in your hand. Flip Pilgrim, Elish Norn, Black Cleave Cliffs, Llanowar Elves. He has two real options here. Take a Mana Dude or take a Boom Boom. Takes the Mana Dude. Yep, and... Uh... And now he can cast that off of his... I don't know if you take the mana, dude. Next turn you have mana to cast Elish Norn. Yeah. I agree. But he also wants mana to cast Crater Hoof Behemoth within a couple turns. That's true. But I mean, he's going to have it regardless. Yeah. Attack Another with one. one of them. We can only Oh, yeah, one. yeah, I flashed it back. At Bruce at 15, a tie ball game now. I like John's spot a little more. Yeah, I think John's pretty far ahead here. Just has more lands, more permanents, more cards in hand, effectively speaking. Far more options. He really is driving this game forward, and Bruce is not going to be able to effectively 
get this game back under control the way things are going. It's really rough because the, the moment he taps mana, he kind of just loses. Yeah. Like, if he taps more than three lands during his main phase, he's just dead. And I'm pretty yeah, but sure. Next that turn, John can just cast, El like, Unburial Rites and Elishnarn through mentally. Correct. Sword, equip, attack. Yep, he is all in. And he kind of has to make that play. Yeah. I think Crater Hope Behemoth has him dead here. It does. Crater Hope costs how much? Uh, Seven or eight. Eight. Okay. So does he have the? Uh, yeah, but that's fifteen with spirits. Six, uh, seven, Once eighteen, again, eighteen with spirits. Players, with the three spirits? Yeah. Oh no, it's like twenty-five, right? Well, no, 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 because he has to tap his two mana dudes plus the untapped land so plus his plus, five. It's, so it's four times four is sixteen plus five is twenty-one plus three is twenty-four. It's twenty-four. Yeah. Twenty-four damage. What's that do? Oh, it has haste? Yeah. Dear lord. Yeah, man, the card's good. I don't just write building out budget columns <laughs> about anything. <laughs> I, I, thought thought it, I, thought it, I thought it was just overrun. Okay, we need to invent a hashtag for victims of Crater Hoof Behemoth. I suggest Hoof. Huff? Because that's all that's left of someone after Crater Hoof Behemoth runs them over. Yeah, I mean, his, his footprints are the lakes of tomorrow. That's flavor text, something like that. <laughs> Creator of Behemoth, uh, an adorable dude, coming into the red zone now. Woo! That is adorable. Boom. This wouldn't even let him attack. It's pretty awesome. Like rarely, like it comes into play and people usually just scoop. You don't actually get to attack for lethal. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, Let's see what these players have as sideboarding options. Bruce Strong, out of the sideboard, has uh, not much. Not a heck of a lot of anything. He has negates. Um, I like Ratchet Bob. I like negate. The thing about Oblivion Ring, used to be good against the Inferno Titan Elish Norton version. Not as good when you're just dying on the spot. Yeah, not as good. That's true. I mean, is it, Critter of Behemoth is... A big deal, it, man. Uh, yeah, it makes, it I, makes I the guess, Freak's I, deck better, act, I think. Active Aggression has to be his best card coming in. Because you just act his Crater Hoof Behemoth in response to the trigger. And then they don't have their Crater Hoof Behemoth anymore, and their team gets Break of Dade instead of Overrun. That's reasonable. Yeah, Active Aggression seems real good here. So that, that's got to be... He needs, he needs that mana open. Yeah. Again, a lot of what Bruce needs to do is early aggression backed by reliable instants afterwards. He needs I'm to loving have... that John Howell is playing Crater of Behemoth Freeds. Yeah. Yeah, it seems you would. <laughs> so, John has the transformation uh, for Hunt Masters in the sideboard, as well as some Ancient Grudges, some Timelies, Array of Revelation, one of each sword. And some zealous conscripts and some bon bonfires. The bonfires are definitely coming in. Oh yeah, bonfires awesome. Uh, would you board it? Yeah, I, I think you have to board in Huntmaster here, right? Uh, yeah, it's weird. Like I, I don't I mean, really know what you take like out. A right? card. Like, I know it's a good card here, but All, the rest I'm a of your deck is also about awesome. How, how John sideboards? I'm, I'm going to be interested to see. Yeah, the sideboard is much different than. Uh, because, like, you're basically the dredge deck where you need, like, a certain number of cards that flip your deck and a certain number of cards that do something once your deck is flipped. Yeah. And you can't really side out your mana base. And you can't really side out your end game. So, are you just, like, cutting your tracker's instincts? That just kind of seems bad, though. Right. I mean, you're just, like, making your engine worse. I don't know. I'm going to be interested to see what he does here. He can take out Gristlebrand. Yeah. Gristlebrand seems painful. And very, very vulnerable to Vapor Snug. Crater of Behemoth, he kills people really dead. It's so much damage. 
Dude, your eyes got so wide as soon as you saw that deck list. Yeah, I was really excited. No, I man, I I made the deck this week, and I was like, I played one game with a reanimator creator of behemoth deck, and that's all yeah. I've gotten to play with it. The deck was super sweet, and I was like, man, I, I imagine this is probably pretty good. Yeah. And I'm glad somebody's actually playing in the tournament, and they're actually 4-0, and, and yeah. they're actually up a game in the fifth round. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Maybe it top eights. Hopefully it top I eights. I would enjoy watching that again. And we're going to get to watch it again, because game two. Yeah. We are... John Hal wears that hat really low. Yeah. Is it hard to see his eyes? So his opponents can't get a good read on him. Does he have the Crater Hope Behemoth? I can't tell, man. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> yeah, imagine that's a... It's got to be hard to get control your emotions when you're Crater Hope Behemoth. Yeah. People. Like, how do you I mean, not you just to act like low. a huge dinosaur? I mean, that's, that's that's the question I ask myself most often. Yeah, like when questions. you get up in the morning, you're like, how do I not <laughs> act like a dinosaur today? Yeah, it's hard. And sometimes you don't have a good answer. So you just act like a dinosaur. All right, yeah. Bruce, leading things off with the Delver of Secrets. And oh, a probe. It's a probe. going to see what John has in his hand now. All right, uh, John is Avacyn's Pilgrim, Elish Norn, Avacyn's Pilgrim. Land, 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 mulch. Pretty good hand. No, that's Tracker's Instinct, right? Oh, Tracker's Instinct, okay. Yeah, so one of each of his green one sorceries, a mana elf, an, a boom boom, a razor verge thicket, a forest, and a shimmering grotto. Picture perfect good. hand. Yeah. What you want. Yep. It's how you draw it up. Pilgrim. Now let's see what Bruce is going to do this turn. A couple lines John can take next turn. Next turn, John could uh, go for a tracker's instincts or a mulch, but he did draw a. Ooh. So Got shot. John definitely uh, limits his options for next, next turn. <laughs> So, I think if you boarded in Huntmaster here, you want to cast your uh, Tracker's Instinct. If you don't, you want to cast your Mulch. I guess it doesn't really matter, because you're going to cast one and then the other. I think you cast... Uh, what is it? Just Mulch first, right? I guess so. Because you can go... Like, when you're on three mana, you can go Tracker's Instincts and cast the Pilgrim on the same turn. Sure. But you need to make sure that you find yourself... Uh, a green source. I mean, he has it's Razor Verge, Forest, uh, Grotto. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure which one is correct here, but it seems pretty close. If anyone really has any close. thoughts, chime in on matters. Twitter. Uh, Bruce has uh, an extra Delver of Secrets here. So when he flips these, they're going to be pretty powerful. John uh, casting Mulch, flipping over a Black Leaf Post, which is going to come to his hand, and a Tracker's Instincts. And Pretty a Faithless Looting and a Crater Hoof Behemoth. Yep. Jeez. So Sylvan's crying for the two colors that he needs, and a nice little flashback spell, and a reanimation target. Pretty good. Two flashback spells, sorry, and a reanimation target. That's how you draw it up. And Bruce's Delvers refused to flip. Yeah, pretty rough for Bruce. Yeah. Bruce only playing 20 lands and 16 creatures, so 24, uh, I guess fewer than that, 21 hits. Yeah, John, uh, flying a 17 here, getting bashed by both those Delvers. Let's see what Bruce says. Snapcast Mage from Bruce, going to uh, copy this attack scene probe. Gonna take another gander at John's hand here. He has cliffs, tracker's instinct, birds, grotto, lingering souls, Elishnorn. He's got options. He's got a ton of options. I and mean, I think it's just cliffs, lingering souls next turn. But it could be cliffs, birds, tracker's instinct next turn. And try and flip a an unburial rights.
I mean, I think you want your end game to be Elishnorn, right? You just want to stick it. Uh, ooh, it's true on a burial right? It's a pretty good one. So now do you flashback that faithful, Faithless looting in your yard? I think you just play the bird and the tracker's instincts, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, you definitely want to maximize your mana here. This is a turn where the correct decision involves tapping all your lands. I agree. So, like, if you're just casting Tracker's Instincts and not Bird for some reason, then you definitely want to flash the one in your graveyard back. Okay, so he's definitely playing Bird afterwards. Ah, he flips Grudge. And no creature. A swing and a miss. Tome scour myself. Alright, and a Birds of Paradise from John here. Tracker's Instinct wow. misses completely. Delver's miss again. And Bruce uh, having a rough game here. Yeah. Unable to flip these Delvers. Another this Snapcaster in hand can only copy this gut shot. I mean, going to be forced to do that. I'm, I'm actually pretty fine with copying gut shot. He's still getting in for a respectable four damage and setting John back on mana. In for four, John down to 13 here. If those Delvers had flipped earlier, John would be all but dead. Yeah. I mean, even if they flip next turn, John is still just on a two turn clock. He's nearly on a two turn clock anyway. Perhaps he this turn should flash back his Faithless yeah. He does have Elish Nard and uh, Brown Rights in hand. Yep. He sees the line. He likes the line. Peel two. Would you like to counter it? No, I would not. Alright. And uh, discard. And Elishnorn and. Uh, this card's two Elishnorns? Do you just discard the Behemoth instead of the other Elishnorn? Yeah. You definitely want options, man. Wow. Really? Still? Ouch. Yeah, and. Uh, this is this a point. story of Bruce running very bad. Yeah, Bruce definitely had some trouble this match. Deck not cooperating at all. Yeah. And that's what happens when you play Crater Hoop Behemoth. Your opponents, they get unlucky. Because Crater Hoop Behemoth doesn't mess around. All of the good fortune is in his hooves. <laughs> all right, in for six, John Howell falling to seven. Well, and all of these draws are just telegraphing that Bruce doesn't, ha well, has not drawn a counter. Whoa, what? Whoa, 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 whoa! What? I do not like this play at all. Neither do I. Given the He's option, ca cast and flashback lingering souls. Don't you just try for an Elishorn? Yeah, you do. Uh, casting and flashing back lingering souls prevents you from dying for a little while. But if he flips Delvers, then wow. Okay. Yeah, poor Bruce Strong. John must just have the read that there are no instants or sorceries anywhere close to the top of Bruce's deck. Well, if he had that read, then he would have put an Elishnorn on the battlefield. I don't know, maybe he also had the read that he had exactly dissipate. It's exactly possible. dissipate. Which, not in Bruce's list. No dissipates. Not anywhere. He has Phantasmal Image in his hand. No dissipates. All right. This is an so, easy block everywhere. Yeah. Boards trade with each other. Now John is just so, so unbelievably ahead. It's 
Five cards versus five cards, except he has all this flashback advantage. Yeah. Unburial Rights targeting Elishnorn. I don't even like that. I do. Like, the thing is, he could have sequenced his plays in the opposite order. So he Elishnorns away his opponent's board, and then he just flashes back. He plays and flashes back Lingering Souls so that he gets four three threes. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, but the big issue is that he had, he had already spent the Lingering Souls. Yeah, like, yeah, at yeah. this point, the Elish Norn yeah, sure. is the right play. But, like, I think you just have to jam on Burial Rites there anyway. Yeah, so, uh, Bruce looking for uh, some sort of answer on the top of his deck with his Ponder. Not looking to find anything. Bruce getting pretty unlucky this game. Bruce obviously drawing a Ponder the turn after he shoves his Delvers into the Spirits. A sick, twisted form of justice. Yeah, at this point, Bruce is really going to have to find a way to deal with Elish Norn. He's, he's going to need a Vapor Snag, something like that. Attention players, if you are but, uh, you no, by the time he gets there, the yeah. he might already be too late. Yeah. Players register for $10 number four. Now, uh, 7 plus 4 is 11 plus... Are we, are we doing math on whether or not Crater Hoof plus Elish Norn is... Yeah, game? It's, it's game right now. Oh, jeez. It is. I need to look up this Crater Hook Behemoth card again. Yeah, Crater Hook Behemoth, man. It's a, re it's a real card. When it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. Bruce with a... Uh, another just taxing probe sees a Crater Hook Behemoth and an Avacyn's Pilgrim. Oof. All right, so let's see. Yeah, it's 15 and... It's 17 if he plays Pilgrim plus Unburial Rites, right? Um, he, well, the Pilgrim, yeah, yeah. Okay, Phantasmal Image, that's going to take care of the Celestorn. turn. Bruce needed that. Let's see if he can... Uh, I mean, his Behemoth could just, like, get in for six. Guy's Revenge style. Yeah. Not the most unreasonable thing. All right. Ooh, another burial rates. That's really, really, really good. Don't discard this one. Don't do it. No, he did, he did it. it. No. Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah. On, uh, generally, when when you have a zillion mana afterward, you just yeah, you, you, you both just have front side it's it and back side it. Most powerful thing your deck can do. Since it's yeah, if two unburial rights resolve, you just win on the spot. If one resolves, you probably win. And so since one unburial right to... is two unburial rights. Yeah, exactly. Getting to cast three instead yeah. of two is way better. Like, when your graveyard is that big, it's basically Demonic Tutor and Black Lotus. Yeah, basically. Oh, we should screen up again at this time. In, In for six. seven. Seven. Or seven, yeah, yeah. Pilgrim. And uh, Bruce on a seven now. Things are not looking good for Bruce Strong. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he drew a sword here, so he might be able to survive a little bit longer. But oh no! Next turn, he just gets hooved again. Yeah. Hoof. Yeah, all right. So, uh, Bruce, really going to need to go through his options here, but not looking good at all. Has a Geist. Has an Invisible Stalker. Three points of toughness. Dead on board. A Burial Rites from the Graveyard. Targeting Crater Hope Behemoth. And it's 10 plus 9 is 19 plus 1 is 20. 20 trampling damage coming into the red zone. Bruce, even if he blocks as much as he can, going to seven, eight, going to negative 10. That's, that's a lot of damage, man. 
Yeah. Creator of Behemoth, man. Welcome to the future. 